You may think your husband has never killed a man, but you're wrong. And before I take him in to face the charges, he'll try to kill me. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Uh, Miss Wong. Miss Wong. Oh, Isa. Couldn't you wait and do that later? So sorry, Mr. Paladin, but this is day for cleaning windows in your room. Well, it's rather annoying while I'm trying to read the newspaper. Oh, lady in charge, say we must keep up schedule. She find that Miss Wong not clean window will be very bad. Oh, much trouble. Come back this afternoon and do them. Have other rooms to clean this afternoon, Miss Cave schedule. Uh, look, Miss Wong, just uh, tell the lady in charge that the guest in this room didn't want his windows cleaned. Uh, she not understand. Most guests are out of rooms by 10 o'clock in the morning. Hmm. All right. You win. I win. I'll go downstairs to read. It would be most helpful for Miss Wong. If Hayboy comes up looking for me, tell him I'm in the lobby. Hey, sir. Thank you. Oh, my. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin. Hmm? Uh, good morning, sir. Oh, good morning, hey boy. Was well, just coming to your room. This telegram come for you. Thanks. Huh. Looks like the one I've been waiting for from Jack Regan. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Regan, the uh, big cattle man you tell me about? Yes, that's the one. He lives up in Oroville. Uh, now, let's see. Uh... Oh, he want you to take his job? Yes. Uh, I'm to meet his foreman in Yuba City the day after tomorrow. That means I'll have to take the afternoon stage. Would you make reservations, hey boy? Oh, yes, sir. And send Mr. Regan my answer. His address is there. Oh, yes, sir. Have gone with travel. only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Jack Regan had lost two payroll shipments to hold-up men in the last month. Now he had hired me to transport a third shipment from the bank in Yuba City to his ranch near Oroville, California. I met his foreman, Luke Williams, the night I checked into the hotel in Yuba City. The plans for secrecy were set. If by any chance our mission was discovered by the outlaws that held up the other shipments, we were to protect each other and see that the money got to Regan safely. The next morning, I rented a horse, picked up the money at the bank, tied the leather money bag to my saddle, and met Williams at the edge of town. We rode the first five miles in watchful silence. Hey, there's a creek up ahead. We can water the horses and rest a spell if you like. Good. Uh, hey, tell me, how much is Regan paying you? That's a private arrangement, Luke. Uh, he owes me a gourdful. I ain't been paid in three months. That's so. 
All right, I guess he's had a pretty rough time of it lately. Losing two payrolls. Yeah, maybe. But it was his own fault. He sent a couple of greenhorns up there both times. Yeah, last time one of them got himself killed. I told Regan he should have sent me in the first place. Yeah. How long have you been with him? Uh, about two years. But you won't find me there two more. You know, I've been looking for another spot. I might even get a spread of my own. It takes a lot of money to start a place of your own. I know, but I've been saving. The old man's promised me back wages when we deliver this payroll. I see. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Ah. Uh, you're sure going to feel good to get off this horse. Yep. How much further to the ranch? Oh, I say another two hours. I wouldn't worry about that if I was you. What? Ranch. Don't try nothing. Neither one of you. I'll splatter you all over that creek. Now drop your guns to the ground. Ranch Carnival. You got a good memory, Luke. You know this man? Yeah. Ranch Carnival. Thought you was locked up in Sacramento. I was. Now I ain't. Didn't take you long to pick up where you left off. Not when I got old buddies around to keep me in touch with what's going on up in Oroville. How'd you break jail? Ain't no jail gonna hold me for long. You should have known that, Luke. What do you want with us? Well, sir, now that you ask... I'm going to be taking the money you're carrying to Regan. But the first thing I'm going to do is kill Luke Williams. Boy, you dirty Don't filthy... Don't move another step, mister. You get it just like he did. Why? If you want the money, you could have taken it without killing him. I got my own special reasons for doing what I did. What happens now? I suppose if I was real smart, I'd kill you, too. But I ain't got nothing against you. I'm gonna let you take a little walk down this creek bed. Might lead you back to Yuba City if you walk far enough. Don't ever try to look for me, mister, because I'll see you coming, and then I'd have to kill you for sure. Now start walking, and don't turn back. Why, you must have grown a foot taller. <laughs> oh, I thought you were never coming back. You've been gone for a year, and Ma said you wasn't coming back. Well, she was wrong. Where is your Ma? Oh, in the house, I reckon. I was going down to that old stream to fish her, and I saw you right off. Well, let's go in and see her. Huh? Hey, what do you got in that leather bag? You got me a present in there? Uh, not exactly, son. Oh, did you bring me a present? Not this time, but I'll be getting you a lot of presents from now on. Who win, Pa? You'll see. <laughs> Ma? Hey, Ma, look. Pa's home. Hello, Lily May. Rains. Well, ain't you glad to see him, Ma? Well, sure, Ned. I... Why don't you go on outside for a little bit? Why? Well, so me and your pa can talk. Grown-up talk. Do you hear me, Ned? Well, but, but I want to take a good look at pa. Well, now, you said you was going to catch some fish for supper, Ned. We're going to need some extra. So you better get started. Yeah. All right, ma. Well, 
Why, Rains? Why did you ever come back? This is my house. Why shouldn't I come back? Not no more, it ain't. It's mine. It's mine and Ned's. You lost your family more than a year ago when you didn't come back. When you didn't keep your promise. Now, Lily May, you know why I couldn't come back. I know they put you in jail, and I know why they did it. That's what I'm talking about. But I was only doing it for you and Ned. If they hadn't caught up with me, well, that bank money would have set us up for life. Don't you understand that? Well, I don't want that kind of life no more. You said the same thing in Wichita before we came out here. How long that money last? Mm, took more than I thought. Oh, you'll never stop lying and thieving, Rance Carnival. You know it and I know it. There's nothing left between you and me. Now I want you to clear out of here. Right now. You got kind of strong-headed since you've been working in that saloon, didn't you? How'd you know about that? I heard. Well, what'd you expect me to do? Starve to death out here without money to buy even a turnip? You could have got a decent job. <laughs> the wife of Rance Carnival? A decent job in Oroville? Well, maybe you should have heard more while you was listening. I couldn't even get a job washing clothes in this town. They's afraid I'd steal them, being the wife of a thief. No, sir, the saloon was the only place I could get a job. At least I had enough looks left for that. And things are going to be different from now on. I got lots of money for us right here in this satchel. You and me's gonna start all over again, Lily May. I don't know where you got that money, Rance, and I don't know how you got out of jail. But I do know it wasn't the right way. And I want you to leave Ned and me alone. Just leave and stay away from us. You talking to the wind, Lily May. I come back to claim what's mine. He's my son, and you're my rightful wife. And I don't care what any other man might have thought while I was gone. And we're going to be together. Nobody's going to interfere. No, Rance. You change your mind. You see. I'm real sorry to hear about that paladin. Luke Williams was a good boy. How'd you get here to the ranch? I found my way back to the main trail. It wasn't too long before a wagon came by and the man took me into Oroville. Well, I'll, I'll send a couple of hands up to get Luke. We'll give him a nice funeral. Mr. Regan, what do you know about this ranch carnival? Well, only what I've heard. Didn't know he was a killer, though. Got his reputation as a thief. Ah. Well, he must have had a personal grudge against Luke. Hmm. That's strange. How's that? Well, Luke mentioned to me about a month ago that Carnival's wife was working in the Paradise Saloon in town. Seeing as how he felt sorry for her. His wife? Yeah. He must have had a few talks with her. Carnival moved into Oroville a couple of years ago with his wife and son and bought a place on the other side of town. Didn't take long for the people around here to catch up to him, though. Do you think he'd come back to see his wife? No, he, he wouldn't do that. I hear she claims to have given him up for good. No, no, he's too smart to do that. He knows that's the first place he'd look for him. Well, I wonder. I think I'll ride out and have a talk with her. Well, I don't know it'll do you any good. Mr. Regan... I'm going to do everything I can to get that money back to you. I know you will, Paladin. That's why I hired you. Gifts that's my yard me. Almost Christmas, no time to lose. Lots and lots of gifts to choose. Is it too late? Hardly. Give him. Give her. A, a gift set by Yardley. Yardley. For her, there's a beautiful array of all new Yardley gifts from $1.50 to $13.50. For instance, there's the Yardley soap chest with two cakes each of delicate English lavender, romantic crushed carnation, and glamorous red roses. Its price, $3.50. 
Or there's a Red Roses cologne and dusting powder set, only $4. All prices plus tax. Yardley at all fine stores. Give him, give her a gift set by Yardley. Hello, son. Catch many fish in this stream? Not two so far. I'll get me one more and I'll be through for the day. Good. You live around here, mister? No. Well, I thought I'd never seen you before. I'm looking for Mrs. Carnival's place. You know where it is? <laughs> I reckon I do. I live there. Oh, you her boy? Yes, sir. Ah. We live up around a the bend there. It ain't far. You come see my ma? Yeah. Is she at home? She's there. My pa's home, too. They're having grown-up talk. Your pa? Yes, sir. He's been away for a spell, but he come back today. You gonna eat supper with us? No, no. Well, if you was, I'd catch fish for you. Well, that'd mean you'd have to catch two more. Yes, sir. Well, you never can tell. Your mother might ask me to stay for supper. She might. Maybe I better catch just one for you, in case she does. Yeah. That's right. Well, that's mighty thoughtful of you, son. Uh, you tell him I'll be there after a bit. All right. Come on, boy. Before I reached the house, I dismounted and crawled up to the back door, being careful to stay out of sight. As it turned out, I wouldn't have been noticed. There was a heated argument going on inside between Rance and his wife. <laughs> Don't go for your gun, Rance. You. Think I'd still be walking to Yuba City? I should have known not to leave you alive. Rance. Well, I'm grateful to you for that, but it doesn't undo the murder you did commit. Are you saying Rance killed a man? Yes, ma'am. And he took the Regan payroll money. Jack Regan's money? That's right. Who did he kill? Never mind, mister. Who was it? Regan's foreman, Luke Williams. Williams? Yeah. Luke is dead. And your husband's going to hang for it. There ain't no man going to pine around my wife and live to brag about it. How'd you know about him and me? A man keeps account on his wife, even in jail. But I ain't blaming you, Lily May. Well, you might as well blame me. I loved him more than I ever loved you. And if you hadn't have come back when you did, we'd have been gone and you never would have found us. Don't you have any respect for your son? How'd you think he'd feel having another man for his father? If you cared for that boy at all, you'd have given up your rotten ways a long time ago. Where's the money, Ranch? I didn't bring it with oh, me. Oh, stop your lying for once. It's right there, mister. It's on the table. Lily May, you're not going to have that money, mister. Oh, no, you... Ranch! <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Carnival. It's just as well that he's dead. If you'd have taken him away, I'd be fearing that he'd get back to us somehow before they could hang him. I don't want Ned to know about this. You won't be able to keep it from him now. If you heard those shots, he'll be coming up to the house to see what happened. Yes, I know. What'll I tell him? He, he never understands. Oh, I think he will. If not now, maybe later. If you tell him the truth about his father. What was the truth? Everything Rance did was for his son. At least, that's what he said. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Good morning, hey boy. You just arrived on stage? Yeah. What are you doing behind the desk? Desk clerk asked me to take over while he have breakfast. Uh, you leave your back here. I take it upstairs when clerk return. All right. Now I'm going up and take a nice, deep, hot bath. Oh, you very tired, Mr. Paladin? Yeah. 
dusty from that miserable stage. Oh, Isa, you'll feel much better after bath. Uh, should he boys send breakfast to room? Hey, that sounds good. You do that. Hey, Isa. Miss Wong, why are you in such a hurry? Oh, great emergency, Mr. Paladin. No hot water on second floor. All guests scream at Miss Wong. Well, you shouldn't let that upset you. Oh, but Miss Wong cannot help it. Must go to basement and see man in charge of furnace. You know, some people can certainly be inconsiderate, well, can't yes, they? Sir, yes, sir. They come to stay at the Carlton Hotel. One of the few places in San Francisco with modern convenience. Modern? Like hot water. Hot? And if something goes wrong, they act as if they'd been used to hot water for years. Oh, yes, sir. Excuse me, please, Mr. Pallada. I must hurry. <laughs> oh, Miss Wong. <sighs> Did she say the second floor? Well, that's my floor. Uh, Miss Wong! <laughs> This miserable cold. And my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets for real relief from cold's misery and sinus congestion. Dristan is the revolutionary three-layer tablet which for the first time makes it possible to unite certain medically proven ingredients into one fast-acting, uncoated tablet. Dristan not only helps drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of cold's infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan's decongestant reaches all congested areas, shrinks all swollen membranes, relieves pressure and pain. An exclusive anti-allergent helps keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers reduce body aches, fever. Vitamin C helps build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated. But the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. There's nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Lillian Bieff, Jack Moyles, Dick Beals, Ralph Moody, and Vic Perrin. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>